Assalamu alaikum friends. All praise is to Allah who is the creator and most merciful. My name is Sayyidah Umama Shah and today I am going to discuss the mandible. Before starting the presentation, I will pray that you live a happy, healthy and prosperous life. So let's discuss the mandible in detail. Stay tuned with me. So friends, as you can see over here is the mandible highlighted in green. This mandible is the strongest and largest bone of the face. This mandible attaches to the skull at the temporomandibular joint. Now let's go and discuss this mandible in detail. As here you can see highlighted in pink is the body of the mandible, in green is the ramus and the two processes above the ramus are the coronoid which is the anterior process of the mandible and the posterior process is called as the condylite process. The condylite process attaches to the skull and forms the temporomandibular joint. This condylite process has two parts, the head and the neck. The neck joins with the ramus. The two coronite processes, the condylite process and the coronite process, separate from each other at the mandibular notch. This one is the mandibular notch. While the ramus and the body meet at an angle and that angle is called the angle of mandible so friends here you can see the one half of the mandible this half of the mandible attached to the other half of the mandible through symphysis menti this symphysis menti is a faint ridge and it is the indication point that the two uh, the two half of the mandible meet at each other at the side of the symphysis menti is a digestric fossa and this digestric fossa is for the attachment of the bellies of the digestric muscle above this digestric fossa is a mental spine and this mental spine spine is for the attachment of the two muscles the genioglossus muscle and the geniohyoid muscle the genioglossus muscle is above while the genioglossus muscle is below remember this that the hyoid line is below the skull so the genioglossus muscle will be below this mental spine and the genioglossus ultimately will be above the mental spine now here is the myelohyoid line and this myelohyoid line starts from the mental spines and ends below the third molar teeth at above the anterior portion of the myelohyoid line is a sublingual fossa for the sublingual vein and below the posterior portion of the myelohyoid line is the submandibular fossa and this submandibular fossa is for the attachment of the submandibular slivery gland. Here is the mandibular foramen and in front of the mandibular foramen is the lingola and this lingola is for the attachment of the sphenomandibular ligament this mandibular foramen is on the medial surface of the ramus of the mandible now this was all about the features now let's discuss more about the mandible here you can see is the mandibular foramen this mandibular foramen transmits the inferior alveolar nerve this mandibular foramen continues as mandibular canal. The mandibular canal continues as mental foramen. And mental foramen continues as incisive canal. One more and more important thing is that the mental foramen transmit the terminal branches of the inferior alveolar nerve, while the mandibular foramen transmit the inferior alveolar nerve and its vessels. Right. And always remember uh, it may be asked in viva or it may come in the paper that mental foramen where is the location of the mental foramen so always write it is below the second molar premolar teeth here you can see the three molar teeth these two are the premolar teeth so below the second premolar teeth is the mental foramen right here this is one is the canine tooth and the two left remaining in front you is the incisor teeth so the one that remains is the muscle of the mandible this is the temporalis muscle and it is attached on the anterior surface of the coronoid process this is the lateral pterygoid muscle and this lateral pterygoid muscle is as you can see is below the head of the condylite process this is the medial pterygoid process here it is at the angle of the mandible this is the mylohyoid line that i discussed in the previous uh, slides 
This is the genioglossus and the geniohyoid muscle attached to the mental spines. This is the digastric fossa at the side of the mental symphysis menti. This is the masseter muscle. This is on the medial surface of the um, of the ramus. This is the buccinator muscle, which is below the three molar teeth, and this is the mentalis, mentalis, which is um, on the symphysis menti. So friends, if you like my video, so subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.